My dear brother priests, the special situation in which the whole world is plunged due to the coronavirus pandemic has necessitated that I seek the help of CCR TV Goa and our diocesan center for social communications media to reach out to you through television. Since we have not been able to meet together at our annual Chrism Mass, which we have been celebrating on the Thursday prior to the Holy Week. Until that is made possible by a change of circumstances, I would like to reflect together with you on this momentous celebration through this medium of communication. Chrism Mass, as we all know, is an integral part of the Maundy Thursday celebrations, which commemorate the Last Supper that our Lord had with His disciples, and during which three very important mysteries of our Christian life are celebrated. The institution of the Holy Eucharist, the institution of the ministerial priesthood, and the Lord's mandate of fraternal charity. Chrism Mass, celebrated traditionally in the morning of Holy Thursday, commemorates specifically the anniversary of the day when Christ conferred His priesthood on the Apostles and on us. That is the reason why the Unum Presbyterium of each diocese joins together with the bishop for the renewal of their priestly promises and to resolve to be more united with Jesus and more conformed to Him. It is also the occasion when the bishop publicly asks for the prayerful support of his priests and of his flock to discharge his pastoral duties towards them and towards the church in general, fully conscious that he has received this sacred task in spite of his total unworthiness. It is with these sentiments that I invite you, my dear brothers in the priesthood of Jesus, to reflect with me once again on this great call that we have received from our Lord, unworthy as we are, and on how we can rededicate ourselves to this, our sacred mission, to the Church and to the world. I expect to return to this when we finally get to celebrate our Chrism Mass, God willing, later this year. Before that, I would like to place before you my vote of profound gratitude in my personal name, and in the name of the people of God in this Archdiocese for the invaluable service that you are rendering to the Church with enthusiasm and apostolic zeal, sometimes in trying circumstances and challenging situations. Only God, who sees everything that is done in secret, will know to reward you in His divine wisdom and love. May you receive His blessings in abundance. The greatness of our priesthood. Many saintly priests who have preceded us have left valuable reflections and teachings about this great gift that all of us have received from the Lord in spite of all our weaknesses and failings so proper to our human nature. I will single out St. John Mary Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests. Reflecting on the priesthood, he said, The priest will not understand the greatness of his office until he is in heaven. If he understood it on earth, he would die, not of fear, but of love. Inspired by this profound thought, I place before you a few points for our joint reflection. 
At the Chrism Mass, my dear fathers, we are invited to renew our priestly commitment, our promises, first, to be more united with Jesus, and second, to be more conformed to him. The strength of a priest depends on his union, on his personal relationship with Jesus. Our beloved Pope Francis once asked the priests of his diocese of Rome, at night, how does your day end? With God or with television? And he continued, a priest must be able to see as Christ sees and to love as Christ loves. He explains further that it took the disciples quite some time to really become Christ to others. For this is not given automatically at ordination. For this to happen, he says, the priest needs to grow in union with Christ through prayer and intimacy. Pope Francis thus takes us back to our first reflection. We are called to promise to be more united with Jesus and to become more like him. This is perhaps our greatest challenge, to be rooted in Jesus and to grow in our intimacy with him. Mark, in his Gospel, chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, tells us of the circumstances in which Jesus chose the twelve. He called to him those whom he desired. Luke will remind us that Jesus spent the whole night in prayer before choosing his disciples. My dear brothers, our priesthood is the fruit of the prayer of Jesus and a sign of his special predilection for each one of us in spite of all our unworthiness. Mark highlights that Jesus appointed the twelve so that they might be with him. In our daily life, where do we find ourselves? With him or elsewhere? When we are with him, we continue to radiate youthfulness in spite of the passing of years, spreading it almost contagiously among those we meet along our way. As St. John Paul II reminded us in his last letter to priests, written from his hospital bed in 2005. He points out that vocations to priestly life will certainly not be lacking if our manner of life is truly priestly, if we become more holy, more joyful, more impassioned in the exercise of our ministry. Brothers, it is only by being more conformed to Jesus that our manner of life will reflect the image of Jesus the priest. There is no other way. I would like to dwell more at length on our commitment to be more conformed to Jesus. I shall trace three images that we need to project in our day-to-day -day life if we are to conform ourselves with Jesus and if we are to lead his flock to pastures fresh and green. First, the image of the shepherd. If we open the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 to 17, we find Jesus entrusting Peter with the duty to tend his sheep, to feed his lambs. He wants that you and I should continue tending the flock that he has gathered unto him when he walked on this earth. Today, that little flock has spread throughout the four corners of the globe. You and I, are placed in charge 
of our own portion of this flock. And we need to reflect onto our sheep the image of the caring shepherd that Jesus is and that he wanted Peter to be. Tend my sheep tenderly, caringly. The type of leadership that we need to exercise is caring leadership. The challenge before us is to make our priestly ministry more humane, more compassionate, more respectful, more appreciative of our sheep. What a poor and radically opposite image of this leadership we can project if we come across to our sheep as arrogant, autocratic and vindictive in our dealings with our flock. Let us remember that they are not our possession for us to do what we like with them. The sheep belong to Jesus. Ten my sheep. They have been entrusted to us by him. And this takes us to the second image of our leadership, the image of the steward. In Luke chapter 12, verses 41 to 43, we find the Lord telling Peter that truly faithful and wise is that steward whom the master will find doing his duty when he comes. Blessed is he, says Jesus. Beloved brothers in the priesthood, we are nothing but stewards, trustees, placed over a portion of the flock of Jesus. We are therefore accountable to our master. So we must look at our priestly ministry as a serious responsibility towards the one who has entrusted it to us and towards those we have been entrusted with. What a privilege it is to shoulder this responsibility. We are called therefore to exercise a responsible leadership as stewards of God's word, of the sacraments and of the ministry of reconciliation. As stewards of God's word, we must first grow in love with it through the daily reading of the scriptures. This will enable us to share it with others through our preaching and catechesis. How serious are we in preparing our homilies? Do our faithful feel that our preaching truly brings them closer to God? As stewards of the sacraments, we need to be ever conscious that we play a very responsible part in administering them to the faithful. For we are they representing him who instituted them for our various needs. What a poor steward image we project when we rattle through the ritual prayers, very specially during the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Our celebrations sometimes sound as if we are not there. Isn't this one of the reasons why some of our faithful begin to look elsewhere for more meaningful liturgies? As priests, we are called to be ministers of reconciliation between us and God and among ourselves. And this task goes beyond the administration of the sacrament. How deeply do we realize that Christian life ought to be at its core an experience of harmony and reconciliation with God and with one another? Does our ministry foster this type of experience among our sheep? Pope Francis, in his very first angelus address, taught us that God never tires of forgiving us and that we are the ones who tire 
of seeking His mercy. Brothers, can we afford to get tired of being agents of reconciliation and mercy, both in the confessional and out of it? On the other side, how can we be such agents in our daily life if our life witness sometimes is a far cry from this call? When we ourselves fail to show patience and mercy to the faithful who come to us in their time of need, may the Lord give us the strength to respond to all these challenges. The third image, the image of the servant. One of the most powerful images that Jesus projects on everyone he meets is that of a servant. People flock to him primarily because they see in him one who serves their needs bodily and spiritual. And he does not disappoint them. In Mark 10, 45, he clearly describes himself as a servant when he says, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. In John 13, we find him doing the great servant act. He bends down and washes the feet of his own disciples. It was the task of the lowliest of the slaves to wash the feet of the guests entering the house. Jesus becomes the lowliest of the slaves when he washes the feet of his disciples. But then he gives out this memorable teaching, If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also must wash one another's feet. This was indeed a master teaching on servant leadership by word and deed. Saint Paul glorifies this leadership in Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7. Though he was in the form of God, he took the form of a slave. His was a servant leadership that took him finally to the cross. He became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The challenges before us to be simple and humble in our approach to our flock, to be available to them, especially in time of their need, even by putting ourselves to some inconvenience, to actively reach out to those who live in the peripheries, living rough and difficult lives. It is the people's need and not our convenience that should dictate our availability to them. As we end our reflection on these three standards of pastoral leadership that Christ offers us, allow me to formulate a few questions which are relevant to you and to me. We shall find the answers hidden in our own consciences let us allow, therefore, our consciences to speak to us. And may the Lord, during these days that call for a metanoia, give us the courage to mend our ways wherever needed. Let us ask ourselves, Do I appreciate my priestly call and ministry? And do I habitually thank the Lord for this great yet most undeserving gift? Do I sincerely strive to grow daily more united to Jesus and more conformed to Him? Is my relationship with Christ truly more important to me than my other human relationships? Do I spend time with Jesus in prayer enough to make me reflect Him in my dealings with others? 
Is my pastoral leadership a caring leadership? A responsible leadership? A servant leadership? Offered with the single purpose of leading the people to God and God to the people? Can my people recognize me as someone who loves them with the heart of Jesus the shepherd and who is ever ready to enthusiastically lead them in ever creative ways to be what they are called to be? Do they easily see in me someone who is concerned about them, praying for them, partaking in their joys and sorrows and always ready to help in joyful, humble and self-sacrificing service, especially in the present challenging situation brought about by the coronavirus outbreak? My dear brothers in the priesthood, I wish you, one and all, a truly prayerful, transforming and grace-filled Holy Week with abundant blessings of the risen Lord, our Chief Shepherd.